system is there? Echo chamber, is it good, is it bad? So much of the internet seems to be these services that go around the world seem to start there. Why? What's going on? Is it the water? <laughs> it's, it's the land of milk and honey, right? <laughs> and the streets are paved with gold? They really are <laughs> paved with Twitters and gold. And, well, it's kind of, I think it's just for me. Um, you know, every community has their tech center. Sounds like you have the, the Web Wednesdays here and things like that, where the folks, like-minded folks, can get together. In San Francisco, that's like every restaurant, every bar, every, you know, everything. Um, you actually get kind of tired of it. <laughs> and I never thought I could ever get tired of, of talking about tech all day. Um, but, you know, within a three-block radius of where I live is Technorati, the automatic office, the tour office, Adaptive Path, uh, Beatster used to be around there. I mean, truly, like, the top like, 10 of Web 2.0 are within like a four block radius. And that just doesn't happen anywhere else in the world. So it's really, it's a great place to be. I think it's alright to visit though. Um, meaning that you don't have to be there, you don't have to live there, which is actually quite expensive, has all sorts of other trade-offs, to get some of the benefits of it. And, but if you can, you know, Web 2.0 Expo, to an summit. There's a few conferences that happen every year there that are really sort of inflection points where you know folks from because there's lots of tech in New York and actually Arizona has a lot of tech places around the United States. They say, oh, I wish we could be like San Francisco. But you all get in the same place and it's a lot of fun. Um, we're, we've gone way over time here, but we can maybe take one one more question. Any more questions here at all? One more. Here we go. I'm just curious if anybody has a, a multilingual blog here, like English and Chinese, and like if there's any problems working with WordPress and uh, any, from anybody's experience doing like multilingual uh, blogs. Well, there's a plugin in you guys' presentation, right? Q Translate. Was Q Translate written by someone here? Oh, okay. So is that what you'd recommend? English? <laughs> if you can, if you can, it's okay. My English is bad, so, so I try my best. Okay. Okay, actually, you can use the Q Translate. You, um, after you, you install the Q Translate, you can see, if we, you can set, um, and you can see three fields in the home, in the pros. Uh, you can choose, for me, I choose the traditional Chinese, simplified, and English. So you can, yeah, I saw your presentation before, so yeah. I could I can kind of imagine what you were, were talking actually, about. Actually, um, actually, you need to create different prompts. It cannot automatically translate for you. You need to close your English and Chinese. Right. Yeah, right. just uh, create one more post from your. Uh, so it's a dual post, or uh, how does it work? Actually, do you you uh, choose actually, language at first, or you click on the individual post to get it? I'm not no. talking about like automatic translation. I'm talking about um, if you want to run a, a blog with this, the same content but in two languages. Yeah, okay, okay. Yes. Uh, okay. To add another at the end for English. Oh. Okay, cool, thanks. Okay, well, I think it's sort of a, a good. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I hadn't seen Q Translate for today, but I checked it out during the presentation. It looks really nice. Well, I think it's a good, a good symbolic uh, uh, moment to coming to the end of this interview because it was the actual community dealing with the community with you watching. <laughs> but I have one more question. <laughs> and that question was somebody, uh, somebody raised earlier on, which was all of your editions of uh, WordPress uh, are named after jazz musicians. W what's going on there? Uh, well, in a former life, I was also a jazz musician. Uh, that was sort of how I got started programming, uh, was I was making I would actually barter with jazz musicians in Houston. I'd make them websites in exchange for lessons. Um, so, how are the lessons going? Oh, well, that was a long time ago. <laughs> well, it, it's, it went pretty well. When I was in college in Houston, I would actually I perform two, three, four times a week, uh, paying gigs. And so I was at, uh, performing pretty actively. But then when I moved to San Francisco, I basically stopped everything. And uh, so I haven't played in a while, but I'm still an avid listener of jazz. And um, I think that. You know, we have a couple things in WordPress that are a little quirky. There's the jazz musicians we name our releases for. There's a tagline at the bottom. Do you know what it is? Yeah, code is poetry. And so both of them try to ground us a little bit because it's so easy 
especially in open source technology projects, they get caught up in, you know, your database relation manager and your you know, all this things that don't really matter to the end user. And I think by you know reminding ourselves or somewhat keeping us grounded in other forms of art, uh, we can think a little bit more about the end user, the the product, rather than just the means of creating it. And um, I hope that these things sort of keep people uh, reminded. The same thing with the Hello Dolly plugin, right? It's totally frivolous, but it's fun. Okay, so with that, I would like to everybody give a great round of applause to Matt. Thank you very much for coming out here. We hope to have you again soon in Asia with more jazz music. And a round of applause for Thomas. Thank you.